India's lunar rover, Pragyan, part of the Chandrayaan-3 mission, has concluded its pioneering two-week mission on the moon's south pole. The Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, announced that the rover had been placed in sleep mode with charged batteries and an active receiver. ISRO expressed hope for its revival for future tasks, emphasizing its significance as India's lunar representative. This achievement positioned India alongside the US, China, and the former Soviet Union in lunar exploration, marking a notable scientific milestone. India is now focusing on a sun-studying probe launched to monitor solar winds from Earth orbit. During Sunday Mass in Ulaanbaatar, Pope Francis made a rare public address concerning religion in China, encouraging Chinese Catholics to be good citizens and good Christians. This historic visit to Mongolia, wedged between Russia and China, holds geopolitical significance. China, an atheist state with tight religious regulations, officially has about 6 million Catholics, but more may practice in underground churches. The Pope's message was conveyed to Hong Kong's Catholic leaders, who play a vital role in Vatican-Beijing relations due to the territory's greater religious freedom compared to mainland China. Late on Saturday, a shooting occurred in the parking lot of a reception venue in Ottawa, Canada, leaving two dead and six wounded. The incident unfolded during two wedding receptions at the venue, causing panic among guests. Witnesses described rapid shots followed by chaos. Police confirmed the fatalities were two men from Toronto, while Americans were among the injured. Authorities have not ruled out any motives but stated there is no evidence of a hate crime. No arrests have been made, and the incident adds to the rising gun violence in Canadian cities. China's President Xi Jinping will not attend the upcoming G20 summit in New Delhi, marking the first time a Chinese leader has missed the event. Instead, Premier Li Chang will represent China. The absence of Xi raises concerns amid simmering tensions between China and India over border disputes and India's closer ties with the United States. The move also dashes hopes of a potential meeting between Xi and U.S. President Joe Biden to address strained relations. Russian President Vladimir Putin will also skip the summit, represented by Russia's foreign minister. Bryce Nguema, the leader of the military junta that orchestrated a coup in Gabon, has been inaugurated as the nation's interim president. The coup toppled President Ali Bongo shortly after a disputed election. While some civilians cheered his inauguration, concerns linger that Gen Nguema's rule could perpetuate the Bongo dynasty's influence that has spanned 55 years. Gabon faces suspension from the African Union following the coup, which has drawn condemnation from the UN and France. This event is part of a recent wave of military takeovers in West and Central Africa. The impending impeachment trial of Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton is expected to focus on his infidelity scandal, which began when he confessed to an extramarital affair in 2018. Texas House impeachment managers argue that Paxton's actions, driven by a desire to hide the affair, led to alleged abuses of office and potential criminal activities. They claim he used his position to assist a real estate investor connected to the affair. Paxton's apparent efforts to conceal the scandal, including secret email addresses and burner phones, may be pivotal in the trial. A 29-year-old climber who went missing near Copper Mountain in Colorado was found dead at the base of a cliff known as Officer's Wall. His friend reported him missing after he failed to return from the climb, prompting a search by the Summit County Rescue Group SCRG. The climber's family provided his last known phone location and a video, aiding in the search efforts. The incident highlights the importance of communication and sharing location information for backcountry recreationists. The Summit County Coroner's Office will release further information. Orlando police have apprehended a 15-year-old boy, Nico Brown, in connection with a drive-by shooting that resulted in the tragic death of a 6-year-old girl, Ajelia Hashem. The incident occurred on August 29th, with another victim, 19-year-old Isaiah Wright, also losing their life. Hashem's mother was injured but survived. Police believe the child and her mother were not the intended targets, and continue to investigate the case. Brown faces first-degree homicide charges related to the shooting. Witnesses are urged to contact the Orlando Police Homicide Unit or provide anonymous tips through Crimeline. Jimmy Buffett, who passed away at 76, left behind a multifaceted legacy. In the early 70s, Key West was a haven for free spirits, and Buffett found his place there. His hit song Margaritaville became the cornerstone of a lifestyle brand, with Margaritaville establishments, products, and devoted fans known as Parrot Heads. 
While some labeled him as a purveyor of kitsch, Buffett's music and persona offered people an escape and a sense of camaraderie. He remained a beloved figure who balanced work and life, leaving behind timeless songs. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has dismissed Defense Minister Alexei Reznikov, citing the need for new approaches as the country's conflict with Russia continues into its 19th month. Zelensky nominated Rustam Umarov, a former People's Deputy of Ukraine and current chairman of the State Property Fund, as the new defense minister. The appointment coincides with a critical phase in Ukraine's counteroffensive in the south and ongoing efforts to strengthen alliances and acquire military equipment. Reznikov submitted his resignation and has faced challenges related to corruption scandals within the Ministry of Defense. Tens of thousands of Burning Man Festival attendees have been trapped in the Nevada desert for days due to heavy rains that turned the grounds into ankle-deep mud. Roads leading in and out of the event were closed, prompting shelter-in-place orders and resource conservation efforts. Some have left on foot, while RVs remain stuck. Organizers hope to reopen roads on Monday, with the festival's culmination and Burning of the Man rescheduled. Emergency personnel also responded to an unrelated death at the event over the weekend. NASA's asteroid tracker has identified the imminent passage of a celestial visitor, asteroid 2021 JA5, on Wednesday, September 6. This cosmic traveler, estimated to measure up to 31 meters in diameter, is about as large as 81 bulldogs, drawing a playful comparison to the iconic mascot of the University of Georgia's football team. Fortunately, there's no need to worry, as this asteroid, following two others on September 3rd, will safely whiz by Earth without any impact concerns. U.S. job growth in August showed a pickup, with non-farm payrolls increasing by 187,000, though it fell below the 12-month average of 271,000. The unemployment rate jumped to 3.8 percent, and wage gains moderated, indicating easing labor market conditions. This trend cements expectations that the Federal Reserve will not raise interest rates in the near term. The economy needs to create about 100,000 jobs per month to match population growth. Despite slower demand for labor, some sectors like healthcare, restaurants, and bars still face labor shortages.